In this short video, I just want to talk to you about the news that the interest rates have been cut again. So most of you will know that for the last seven years, we've had record low base rate from the Bank of England, 0.5%. But this last Thursday, they just cut the rates again down to a base rate of 0.25%, just a quarter of a percent. Now, that doesn't mean you can get finance at that level. The banks make a profit above that. But it means that the bank's lending in general will drop. The flip of that, though, means that savers are now getting less returns even. Yet again, their returns on their savings are pushed down. Okay, so what does this mean for you as a property investor? Well, with the current context and what's going on, we, you know, we, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the Brexit as well. You know, when, when Brexit came about, about a month ago, you know, everybody said there'd be a, an absolute disaster in the property market. And we've seen scaremongering in the newspapers. Um, I laughed last week when uh, Savills, it was reported that Savills, one of the big estate agents in uh, London, that their profits were down uh, the first month after Brexit. Well, when you sell a house, it takes eight to 12 weeks for the purchase to go through. So if your profits are down one month after Brexit, it's nothing to do with Brexit, it's to do with problems in your business. Um, so the press, of course, are scaremongering, they're looking for stories, but they're not finding that many. There hasn't been that many stories about the prices, property prices. So I think uh, the same as I said on the day of Brexit, I think we're going to see some little drops. There's definitely a little bit of uncertainty in the market at the moment. People are a bit unsure. And there were a few people around the date of Brexit that kind of held up their chains or started to panic a little bit. But we've really, really seen that settle down just a month on. I think that's really, really settled down. So I think London may see some, some slight uh, price drops. Uh, but remember, that's gone up 80% in the last eight years. So it's not really a drop, it's just a realignment. Um, I think the Midlands and the North and, and many other areas outside London actually won't see uh, a great change. It may just slow down their uh, period before they start to go up again by maybe six months or so. Um, but, uh, but beyond that, I don't see any great changes there. So what are the opportunities that we've got? Well. You also need to understand with Brexit that uh, the Europeans have now got a big problem because having spoken to quite a lot of them, they're in two camps. There are some Europeans that think the UK is leaving and therefore, but they still want to trade with us, they still want to have a great relationship, so therefore they've got to strike a great trade deal with us. The flip of that though is the uh, EU saying, do you know what, this is the first country to leave, if we give them a good deal, then the Spains, the Italy, the Greeces, the other countries are potentially going to leave as well and because they will believe they get a good deal. So we've got to give the UK a really bad deal because otherwise it encourages other countries to say, well, we don't need to be in this anymore and it can very quickly break down. So there'll be some uncertainty around that for the next six months, 12 months, even 24 months while that piece gets sorted out. And for some people that will cause a bit of of hesitation you know when people are uncertain they get a bit fearful a bit of hesitation which again supports what i was saying about maybe the next six months a little bit quieter but i don't i definitely don't foresee drops and to finish that piece off five years from now and i said this on the day of brexit five years from now i think the house prices will be where they would have been whether there'd been a brexit or not now why do i believe that well the supply and demand issue remains exactly the same. What actually drives house prices is people wanting to live in a property, people wanting to live somewhere. We've already got a million house shortfall in the UK, so there's not enough houses for the people that we've got. And we've still got net migration of a large number coming in. I don't think Brexit's going to massively change that. I know people voted on that basis and it will make some changes, but I don't think it'll massively change that. So we still need to be building more houses, getting more properties, and all those things push upwardly on the price. Okay. So as a specific property investor, what are some things to consider? Well, first of all, if you've already got mortgages, you might have some great news dropping through your letterbox shortly, because if you're on a tracker mortgage or just a variable rate, then your payment should be dropping. Now, that's a great opportunity to either write back to the bank and say, do you know what? I want to keep my payments the same because I'm used to paying that and this will start to pay the mortgage down more quickly. That can be a great response. Or to take the difference and to make sure you push it into savings. The danger is most people just leave it sat in the current account and just get swallowed up and spent on extra treats. 
instead of using the fact that they're low at the moment to leverage and push things. The second thing is that while people are a bit uncertain, it's a great time to look for discounted deals. Okay? Now, it just might push a few extra people over to saying, Do you know what, I'm a bit uncertain, I want to get rid, right, you buying, even though it's a discount, I just want to get rid, I'll definitely sell to you. So it's a great opportunity to look for discounted deals. It's also a great opportunity to look for joint venture partners. There literally are thousands of thousands of people in the UK, tens of thousands, that have tens of thousands of pounds in the bank. And that money in the bank is now earning them absolutely nothing. So approaching them with joint venture opportunities, you might think, well, I don't have the experience to do this, but you only need to have more experience than them. When I started out, my only property experience was I'd read a book. My next door neighbor had some money, I'd read a book. And I went and said, do you know what? I've read this book, I really think we should get into property. I'll do all the work, will you put the money in? And he put £100,000 into that investment. So with just the experience of a book, behind me and we now have 70 of my properties I have jointly with Mark as a result of that. So you know your experience doesn't necessarily need to be as high as you believe it does. Get out there and speak to people. You need to make people aware that you're looking for joint venture partners, that you're looking for people with money, you'll do all the work and are they interested in exploring investing in property. So brilliant opportunity there because people will just be fed up with their money not earning them anything right now. If you're looking to refinance, now might be a great time to do it. If you're looking to kind of build an extension or you're looking to get a new deal on any mortgages you've got, reviewing now could be a great time. Of course, if you're on a very cheap standard variable rate, you may not be able to beat it. But if you're looking to borrow more or to move, great time to lock in some brilliant rates over the coming months without a shadow of a doubt. But remember if you're doing that, remember if you're buying investment properties right now to still stress test the property because the rates won't stay this low forever. We start to feel, you know, if it's been this low for seven years, you start to think that's your new reality. Well, at some point, they'll go back up. So it's really important to stress test your properties. If the rates went up another three or four percent, could you still afford the mortgage payments? Is it still cash flow positive? And if it's not, don't buy it because there will be other properties that are. So I really hope you've found this video interesting. It's uh, really interesting times for us in the property market. Uh, it's, as an investor, somebody who looks to borrow and maybe use other people's money to build a portfolio, brilliant opportunities there. Mortgage finance, all finance being so cheap at the moment, brilliant opportunities there as well. So it's an absolute great time to take advantage of that leverage and to get your portfolio moving to the next level and the level above that. Um, I, I've enjoyed speaking to you, I hope you've enjoyed it too, and I'll speak to you again soon. Invest with knowledge, invest with confidence, create financial freedom. Thank you. Hi guys, it's Aaron here. Did you enjoy this week's video? If so, there are three things you can do to continue your property investing journey. The first is you can click here and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really hope you do because then each week I can keep sending you great educational videos just like this one so you can keep developing your property knowledge. Secondly, you can click the link here and get a free copy of my book, The Property Coach, where I teach the nine steps to really truly successfully building a property portfolio. The third thing you can do is click here and go to my website www.aaroncurry.co.uk and there you can subscribe for free to my newsletter. And What that means is you'll get loads of free educational content in lots of different forms and also any of our promotions or offers that we run are also there on the website and also in those e-newsletters. Again, helping you move forward with your property investing journey. So if you want to take action, just click any of these three boxes or all three and move forward to the next level. And in the meantime, invest with knowledge, invest with confidence, create financial freedom. Thank you.